Welcome. My name is Stefan. I'm a product manager at Google. And with Sarah, today, we're going to lead you to a session on Merchant Center, mastering Merchant Center tools and tips to make you more successful online. So Merchant Center has always been the place for you to bring your inventory online. And we have come a very long way since the beginning. We have been hearing your feedback a lot. And we have been working hard to build a better solution for you to manage and upload your inventory online. As you can see, uh, the recent redesign of uh, Diagnostic makes it more intuitive and aligned with AdWords, so you can better navigate the platform. So the agenda for today, I'm going to talk about Diagnostic and the new exciting features there. And then I'll leave it to Sarah to tell you about feed management. In the end, just join us if you have any questions. So first of all, I would like you to meet Mia and Ben. Mia is an outdoor enthusiast, and she wants to buy hiking shoes. And Ben owns an outdoor store and would like to sell these shoes to Mia. What we do today, we want to show you, with each feature we are going to present you, how they are going to impact positively Ben online. So let's dive into Diagnostic first. As you know, Diagnostic is the place where you go and you quickly assess the health of your feed. You can pinpoint the data that could impact your performance. The feature I'll mention today fall in four categories. First, we made the messages easier to understand. Secondly, we work on filtering the downloadable report. Fourth, we are presenting you with richer reports so you can know what to prioritize when you fix the issues. And finally, a huge request from all of you, we are actually integrating account reviews request directly into Diagnostics. The new look of Diagnostics is more similar to AdWords and is meant to give you all the critical information at a glance. At the top, you have the three tabs. You have item issues, feed issues, and account issues. Then below, you see the key metrics for the last moment in time. Then you have the chart. You can also hide section of the charts that you don't need, so you can just follow the trend that you want. And then very important, you have a filter tab in the middle which now will impact both the list below and also the downloadable reports. So uh, a common piece of feedback we got from you is that sometimes it's hard to understand what an error message means. We know that. So in the last few months, we have been working to rewrite completely the error messages. So besides doing that, we are going to add more information that lead you to resolution. You can see an example in the little pop-up. And whenever available, we link directly from the issue to the Help Center article that explains that. So in our case, Ben is a small shop owner. He doesn't have time to memorize the feed spec and just read it every time he has a problem. With this feature, if there is a problem, he just clicks on the article, understand what to do, and fixes it in no time. And of course, we just started to, write, to add more articles. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. So tell us what you need, and we'll get it done. Another thing that so you know that you can view 50 samples, random samples, of items affected by each issue. And um, this is very, very useful because you can actually understand if there are patterns in the data. Uh, we made it more accessible. So there's just a label now, view samples, next to, the, to each issue. And for example, for Ben, he realizes that uh, generic images are really a problem in his feed. Without even downloading the report, just in the UI, he clicks on View Samples, and he realizes that all the generic images belong to the same kind of shoes. And he remembers that two weeks before, he uploaded those shoes. He had no time. He just picked one stock photo for all of them. That's a problem. So voila, he knows what to fix right now. I'm also happy to announce that this feature will work for past data as well. So you can just click in the chart, select a point in time, and both download the report and view the samples for any time in the past 30 days. We also heard often, and I think you must have experienced that, the downloadable report might be really huge and hard to manage. You have all the errors crammed together, a lot of warnings. You might not have the tool to manage that and to understand really what to do. So now I'm happy to say that the full report respects the filters. So in case of Ben, he sells in different countries in Europe. He can just select Germany, for example, and maybe pick only one feed. And then he has a much more manageable file to work with. But what if Ben has a really messed up feed? 
this was another huge feature that you request us. So I'm happy to announce that now you can download a report for each speci specific issue. That, um, so Ben, for example, uh, he has a problem with generic images. So he just downloads that one, sits down with his webmaster, they go through a very small list, there's just that problem, they can fix it in no time, and get done with it. So imagine these days, if you have a 100 megabyte file, I mean, it's, it's really impossible to manage. With this new feature, you can cut through that in no time. Another huge request we got from you, but that you want more signals to prioritize what to fix. So the opportunity step in Merchant Center, you might know that, we try to do it by estimating the potential for future clicks if you bring back an item uh, online. But of course, future click is just one signal. And we can do a good job only with a subset of your item. Our machine learning model needs a lot of data for that. So unless this is reliable, we don't give you that information. And by the way, what if you care about a product type? That has to be live because you know, maybe there is a promotion on that. The promotion has to be live. So I'm really happy to announce that we are adding seven new columns to the Lodobo report. You get the five custom labels, product type, and Google product category. This is the data that you provide us already. We give it back to you together with the issues. So in this example, Ben notices the two products which are tagged with full promo, his full promotion, are disapproved. And of course, that cannot be. They have to be live. He's pushing the promotion. So he fixes those two first. And now, with peace of mind, can leave the rest of the problems for later in the day, knowing that the promotion is running. So you have been, you have, you've seen that we've improved messaging, the way to filter the downloadable report. You can also um, look at be, uh, past data with the 50 samples. And we give you better signal to prioritize what to fix. But lastly, I would like to talk about account reapprovals. We know it's a big pain point for you to request them. There is a manual form. You have to fill it up and then follow up via email with support. So we have been working to integrate this into diagnostics. So whereas the previous feature are launching next week, I'm very happy about that. This one is something we are working on. And you'll see you can request the review next to each issue and actually follow up and understand what's going on with your request. This is something we are launching in the next few weeks. So we really hope that all these features are meeting your needs. Go check them out as soon as they are live and give us feedback. And uh, now to Sarah for some feed management news. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah, and I'm a product manager at Google responsible for feed management in Merchant Center. Today, I would like to show you how your life could be significantly made easier with our new feed management tool. Over the course of last year, we launched a beautifully newly redesigned feeds tab in Merchant Center. The goal of the new feed management tool is manifold. First of all, it allows you to send us your raw data from a variety of different formats and then tie them all together in Merchant Center. Next, we provide you the tools and features needed to modify and optimize your product data. Therefore, we launched supplemental feeds as well as new feed rules. And lastly, you can go international in only a few clicks. Let's all embark on a journey now together with our merchant Ben and help him sell his hiking boots to Mia. Over the remainder of the presentation, you will encounter examples of Ben. The feeds tab is now a one-stop place for you to manage your product data, independent whether you submitted it through content API, through a spreadsheet, or through a text file. Here, you can see a screenshot of how the new feeds tab looks like. At the top, you can see the primary feeds, which contain the main product data information that you provided us. At the bottom, you can see the supplemental feeds. A supplemental feed is a secondary feed used to add more data or to override existing data. What is the main motivation for Ben to use a supplemental feed? I would like to highlight three typical use cases. The first example 
why Ben might want to use a supplemental feed to add more data is to set up a custom label. Ben can send a custom label for all his hiking boots that are particularly good price for value. Later, when setting up a campaign, he can then refer to those custom labels to bid higher on those labeled hiking boots. Another example to use supplemental feeds to add more data is to set up a promotion. Ben might want to, uh, fall is starting soon, so Ben might want to set up a promotion for his newest fall collection. He can do so by submitting uh, promotion IDs in a separate supplemental feed indicating which products should be used for the promotion. And lastly, why would Ben utilize supplemental feeds to override data? Ben has very frequent updates to availability because he's selling a lot of his hiking boots very frequently. Supplemental feeds are designed to support frequent online inventory updates. He can therefore submit price and availability updates in a separate supplemental feed to always take the latest value. Once you have configured uh, or registered all your primary and supplemental feeds, you can configure feed rules. Feed rules in the new feed management tool have been redesigned and reimagined. They're now more expressive in nature and treat all data sources equally. Here you can see a screenshot of the new feed rules UI. On the left-hand side, you, you can see the attributes of the Google feed specification, and on the right-hand side, the values that have been assigned to those attributes. For example, Ben was able to get more offers live by setting his condition values to new because he knows he only has new hiking boots in his store. In the following, I would like to walk you through the key benefits of using feed rules and why maybe also some of you might want to consider using feed rules. The biggest use case is to get more offers live. As we saw in the previous example, ben, when diagnosing the errors, Ben noticed that he has many disapproved offers because it's missing condition values. With only three clicks, he was able to set all the condition values for all his offers to new because he knows he only has new hiking boots and like this all got the, his offers live. Another interesting reason to use feed rules is to optimize your product data, to get more clicks or to get higher in the ranking. Ben might want to prepend the brand and other information to the title to, to get more clicks. And last, feed rules can be used to unlock new opportunities. Not only supplemental feeds, but also feed rules can be used to set up a custom label. So Ben might want to use feed rules instead of a supplemental feed to label all his best value products that he can later refer to in a campaign. Let's have a closer look how the feed rules editor looks like. There are a number of operators available to you divided into two sections, the sources part and later the modifications part. In the sources part, you can assign a value to a required attribute. And then in the modifications part, you can further optimize your product data by appending values or find and replacing values with more common expressions. Once you have configured all your feed rules, you might want to test them. As part of our new feed management launch, we provide you with efficient tools to troubleshoot your account and test any changes. For example, here in the screenshot, you can see Instant Preview. We recently launched Instant Preview, which lets you see any changes on an offer-by-offer -offer basis instantly for each feed rule that you have. So here, you can see the title value before and after prepending the brand. Ben has registered his feed and configured feed rules, and now he's celebrating his initial success in Germany. Now, Ben would like to grow and expand to neighboring countries. Multi-country targeting allows Ben to use, to manage a single feed across multiple countries and languages. For example, 
and this with only a few clicks. So, for example, when if Ben wants to expand to Switzerland with a different currency, we automatically convert the currency for Ben. Let's quickly recap what we've seen. In the first part of the presentation, we saw the newly and the redesigned and improved diagnostics tab. In the second part of the presentation, we saw many exciting new features for you to manage your feed and to make your life easier. Ben was able to send us his raw data from a variety of different sources. He then set, added additional data through supplemental feeds and configured feed rules to optimize his data. Last but not least, he decided to go international and was able to do so in only a few clicks. I'm convinced that you will also enjoy the many new features that we have in Merchant Center to manage your feed and to, to diagnose errors as much as Ben does. We will stay a bit longer in the room should you have any questions. Thank you very much.